Hi, I'm Vivian. And I'm Jason. And this is Burger of the Week. Each week we discuss an episode of the Fox animated series Bob's Burgers, and we create a themed burger based on the episode. This week we're talking about Season 2, Episode 2, Bob Day Afternoon. It was written by Dan Feibel and Rich Rinaldi, and it was directed by Wes Archer. It aired March 18th, 2012. We have a couple of new voice actors, Bill Hader as Mickey, and he's best known for his work on SNL. Yeah, if you don't know who Bill Hader is, I, don't, I just, yeah. Look him up and you'll be like, oh, I actually do know Bill Hader. Yeah, and everything. He's, he's been in a ton of movies. He's great. Such a good comedy actor. And we've got David Herman as Rodney and David Herman plays Mr. Frond. It's not a voice that I knew when I was listening to it. I was wondering who did that voice. And so finding out that it was David Herman, I was like, oh, nice. Nice. Good job. The store next door was Hannibal's Dead Animals Taxidermy. I kind of like that because Hannibal's Dead Animals rhymes, you know? Well, it's good. Well, it goes together, yeah. yeah. The exterminator van was the Pest Pesterer. I'm guessing that's a Horse Whisperer reference. Oh, actually, I just figured it was like the best pester, I guess. (laughs) The burger of the day was charred to a crisp burger. Yeah, I think that my guilty as charred burger would have been better, personally. (laughs) Yeah, d- charred to a crisp doesn't really sound very appetizing. No, no, not really. So when Mickey asks later, what the heck is that? I don't really blame him. The yeah. name doesn't exactly make you want to eat it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not appetizing. Which, to be fair to Bob, we have come up with some really unappetizing burger names. That's true. That is very true. So, you know, you do you, Bob. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> All right, so we'll get right into this episode. So before we get started, what do you think of this episode? I think it's great. Yeah, I love this episode, so I'm kind of worried I'm not really going to have that much to say because I don't really feel like I'm going to be able to criticize that much. I just think it's really good. Well, we can't even really... We don't always have to criticize. No, but cr- critique. Yes, critique. You know, criticism is Analyze. Isn't... Although criticism... Evaluate. Criticism, yeah. Criticism. Thesaurus. Oh my god. Oh my god. Interruptions. Oh my god, I'm gonna kill you. Um, <laughs> okay. Criticism isn't always negative, right? It's just looking at something closely. That's true. It just sounds so negative. It does. But it's not. Anyway. Yeah. So I don't feel like I'm gonna have all that much to say. Mm-hmm. But we'll, I guess we'll see how this goes. Bob believes he can convince the bank manager to approve his loan application, but it's immediately denied. Upon returning to the restaurant, Bob sees police cars rush to the bank. The kids are walking home from school, listening to Louise complain about an essay she needs to write. The Belchers watch from the restaurant as a news crew and a SWAT team arrive. So the episode title, Bob Day Afternoon, is in direct reference to the Al Pacino movie Dog Day Afternoon, which was 1975 film. Very good movie. Have you watched it? Yes. I have not. It's <laughs> really, really good, and it's based on a true story, which is really interesting. Oh. About two guys who go in to rob a bank, and they don't realize that the truck has already taken the deposit away, so the bank only has, like, a grand in it. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> and before they can leave, the cops show up, and they have to hold everybody in the bank hostage. Oh. And there's no money in the bank, so they have to try and work their way out. And Al Pacino's character, this is his first time robbing a bank. And his partner is kind of super depressed. And yeah, it's really good. Do you feel like Mickey is supposed to be one of the characters? Not really. I think they just kind of played on the typical bank robbery hostage situation trope. And yeah. And... Just kind of focused on the title of the episode. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But there's there's similarities, like ordering pizzas happens in the movie as well. And having the, the one police chief guy being all hot-headed is <laughs> similar as well. But Yeah. Yeah. I feel like this opening moves really quickly. Mm-hmm. They like, set up the scene very, very quickly. Yeah, we know what's happening in the rest of this episode. It's just... There's no nonsense here. Like, as much as we have our great jokes and it just doesn't move as slowly, I guess, as 
as other episodes of Bob's. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like it just moves very, very quickly. I love that scene with the bank manager. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> it is. Because they don't respect Bob whatsoever. He has, he's below dirt to them. Yeah, he's an inside joke, basically. I think it's hilarious that the bank manager just completely commits to the bit when he grabs that paper and he says, you know, I have to take this call. And then Bob just responds, not like, uh, okay, I don't understand. You're being rude. He's just like, uh, fine. I'll leave you to your piece of paper phone call then. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> like, you're being ridiculous. Yeah. We're not going to pretend you're not. Yeah. And then when Bob tries to be angry and he says, I'm going to make a scene, he can't commit he to can't that. He can't even commit to making a scene. No. <laughs> Goes to knock over the cardboard guy and immediately regrets it. Yeah, it's kind of sweet, I guess. Bob isn't a scene-making kind of guy in this episode. Right. Whereas in the past, he kind of is. He blows up and he causes big scenes. Although he does tend to cause scenes with people that won't have maybe a direct influence on his business. Because he makes a scene when he's talking to the owners of Reflections yeah, in uh, Art Crawl, uh, but he doesn't really make a scene around Mr. Fishoder, for example. He made a huge scene in front of the whole town in Lobster Fest. Yeah, I guess. No, you're right. They're all potential customers. Yeah. Okay, Bob <laughs> makes a scene all the time, but I kind of like that he didn't in this moment. He just, he mm-hmm. remained calm. Good for you, Bob. Good yeah. for you. Mickey the bank robber demands pizza. Bob is upset that Jimmy Pesto's will be on TV, but he's delighted when Mickey throws the food away. Bullet ridden. Bob suggests burgers, and Mickey asks him to deliver the food himself. Bob walks over to the bank and runs inside when the cops start shooting. Bob becomes a hostage. One of my favorite moments in all of Bob's when he's leaving to go deliver the burgers. Oh my goodness. It's so good. It's so good. That's definitely my favorite part of this episode. I didn't really know what was going to happen. I didn't know if Bob was going to become one of the hostages. Well, as soon as he puts that vest on and he goes over, I was like, oh, yeah, okay. He's going to get stuck in there for Mm -hmm. sure. And it's nice to see his family get a little excessive with their affection. They're getting very emotional. Yeah. Starting to kind of freak out a little bit. Yeah, and Linda's kind of like, okay, just come back to me. But then the kids climb all over him. Linda's still holding on to him. Sergeant Bosco is yelling at him (laughs) to shake them off. Yeah, it's a great... (laughs) There's a lot going on in that scene. And everybody's yelling at each other. And Mm -hmm. there's just voices over top of voices. And Jean's yelling, I don't know about sex. And (laughs) Louise is saying, who am I going to write about? about for this stupid paper. You're going to have to write about Jean, Dad. Yeah. No, no, if you die, I'll write about you, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> it's really sweet because everyone's so emotional and you don't really get that. We haven't really got that in the past. Mm-hmm. Everybody's saying, oh, I love you, Dad, and I'm going to miss you, or you're the best, or I don't know what we're going to do without you, or we're scared that you're going to die, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's very sweet to know that his family really loves him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're a little just... crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because Linda's they're right. not getting sad. That's the weird thing. They're they're not upset. They're like freaking out. Yeah. They're like getting aggressive and climbing all over him and <laughs> just lots of yelling. I understand it. I can get oh, yeah, aggressive sure. with my affection sometimes. It's it's totally believable <laughs> and I like it. Yeah. And then Linda's perfect line. Come back to me, Bobby. Don't leave me with these friggin' kids. (laughs) Well, yeah. (laughs) I just think it's this... It's the best part of this episode for me. Mm -hmm. It's just the cutest. I laugh every time. It's so sweet. Mm -hmm. This is what Bob's is for me. Yeah. Yeah. Family moments like that. Mm -hmm. I noticed that when Sergeant Bosco is talking to Mickey on the phone, when Gene picks up, he says, All I know is I was talking to Ken. Which I think is a, it's albino Ken. That's definitely a callback. Yeah. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. I wonder what he was saying to his friend. Albino Ken. Hmm. Weird. I really like Sergeant Bosco. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he's hilarious. And he will show up later, which is nice. Mm-hmm. We will see him again. And we see some of the old cops from season one in the background as well. 
Oh, do we? Do we see the... The, the two ladies. Ladies? Yeah. Oh, okay. They don't do anything. They're just in the background of the restaurant standing there. But... Really? I didn't even notice them. Mm-hmm. Watched this episode like three times. How did I not notice them? Anyway. <laughs> what do you think about the robot college joke? The robot college joke was unique to me because it was almost like a family guy moment. Mm. Where they have kind of like a flashback thing and they go through a bunch of scenarios. I liked it. Yeah. Because it just showed Gene's imagination dreaming of what it could be. Did you like it? I did, actually. I thought it was really funny. But then I started thinking, well, aren't these situations a little bit too grown up for Gene? Like, I don't think so. No? Because... Like, that's grade six. He's in grade... Is he in grade six? No. You should be. Uh, well, okay, maybe. Eleven. I'm just trying to imagine, like, where would he have seen somebody arguing with someone else about not driving drunk? And Anywhere. Streaking, I guess, makes enough sense. Mainly because it's Gene, and I think Gene would prefer to be naked all the time. <laughs> yeah. But then walking in on a guy... These are all situations that are very plausible for a grade for six... a grade six student. Wow. Okay. I've just that feels really young for me. Really? Yeah. Oh. For some reason, I just feel like they wouldn't really know about those situations unless they were watching movies about college. Like, well, you definitely know about drunk driving when like you're in grade animal six. Animal party. Animal house. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You definitely See, know I don't about... even remember the movie names. <laughs> you definitely know about drunk driving when you're that age. You know about you know about masturbation. You know about streaking. I guess. These are all... Just in the context that they're in, it really seems like they're taken out of a movie like Animal House. Well, they're to me, they're very childish imagination imaginings. Really? Like, way blown out of proportion. Okay. So, it seems... Very fitting for an 11 year old. Mm. Alrighty. Well, okay then. I don't know. You were an 11 year old boy. I was an 11 year old <laughs> girl with parents who definitely would not have let me watch those kind of movies. So maybe I'm just. But I don't even yeah. think it has to do with the movies that you watch. I just think it has to do with things that you know about. Yeah, I guess your friends and that kind of stuff. I don't know. I didn't really think about college much at that point. So. It was too far away then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I do like the joke. I do think it's funny. It's rare for Bob's Burgers to have something like that. Like a little, a a little montage. Yeah, yeah, like imagining something like that and having, you know, a minute dedicated to it. Mm-hmm. And then we bring it back for the credits at the end. Mm-hmm. The masturbation part, of course. Yeah. Which actually was probably my favorite part of the imaginings, because when he's like, just performing some routine maintenance, doesn't anybody knock? And you see a poster of a, of a photocopier on his wall. Oh my god, of I course. don't know, just, it, it's pretty great. It's actually quite funny. The um, inflection, the tone of the robot. Yeah. Doesn't anybody knock around here? <laughs> It's great. So good. And then when Mickey says on the phone to Bobby saying, well, scumbag cops with their scrunched up faces and their stupid arms. And, and you see Bosco just right there. And yeah. He's, he's but not only a... that, he, there's a cop in the background who raises his arms and looks at them like, my arms aren't weird. Oh, that's fantastic. There's some really good background moments in this episode. Yeah. And it doing this podcast has caused me to pay more attention because... Mm-hmm. This show actually does stuff in the background in relation to what characters are saying. Mm -hmm. So it's neat that you can kind of look out for them. Yeah. They actually have their characters react. Mm -hmm. It's more work for the animators, but it pays off. Yeah. It's the little details. All right. Moving on. Louise talks to Mickey, the new subject of her report. Sergeant Bosco tells Bob that the cops have a plan and to tell everyone to hit the deck in one hour. Tension increases as the hostage situation continues. Okay, my second favorite part of this episode is definitely Louise yelling, It's my daddy! And did you notice the cop in the background? (laughs) Every time she yelled, 
the, there's a cop listening in on the conversation, and every time she yells, he takes off the headset. And oh, he's like, really? Oh, it's so loud. And then he puts it back on. And oh, then that's he takes great. it, does it several times. It's really good. Oh, that's great. Yeah. It might be the same cop that checks out his stubby little arms. Oh, it probably is. Yeah, good <laughs> point. I'm going to have to look back, mm-hmm. see that. And when Mickey tells Louise to shut up and she goes, oh, don't tell me to shut up. I love that. It's so good. Yeah. Oh, Louise is fantastic in this episode. She's great in this episode. Yeah. It really feels like Louise to me. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And everything that she does and everything that Jean does, I guess everything the kids do this episode makes Linda's comment about don't leave me with these friggin' kids all the more meaningful because everything they do is just so annoying. Oh. <laughs> so it's like... Annoyingly charming. Yeah, I exactly. Yeah, but they're okay. just so... Yeah, I was laughing too hard at all of them. Yeah, so I, I didn't really notice how annoying they were, I guess. Yeah. But everything that they did felt very true to their characters. Mm-hmm, for sure. Um, I didn't feel like any part was really out of character or we were stretching that character to try to like make a joke Mm -hmm. it just felt very real yeah me too Mm -hmm. agreed and i like bob's comment to mickey about oh no it's not that i'm a great dad it's that i don't want to pay regular people people to work there (laughs) that's very true to bob yeah and it's true to the show we bring that up later on several times i think actually because that's just the reality. They can't afford to pay people to actually work there. Yeah, they can't afford to pay employees. No. They don't have that kind of money. Mm-hmm. So they actually need their kids to work there. Yeah. Which is nice because the kids have a purpose, right? Like, they have to be there for a lot of the episodes. They can't just, yeah, they're not just be doing whatever. Yeah, it makes sense in the story. And they're not just down there doing their homework or just hanging out with mom and dad. They're actually there working. Mm-hmm. Uh, working. Labor laws, yeah. 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 Working is a, <laughs> a loose term. Yeah, but... <laughs> well, scraping the gum from yeah. under tables, that kind of thing. Yeah. <clears throat> I do like that Teddy and Mort pop in during the news segment to add to Linda's message when she's saying, Oh, I'll do anything, Bob. And Teddy says, Anything, Bob. I'll do anything. But Mort says, Well... Most things. <laughs> I'll do most <laughs> things, Bob. Of course, Teddy is just there. Yeah. You know, being Bob's best friend. Mm-hmm. It's adorable. And Mort saying his one line and then that's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Jason and I were recently talking in the car on our way to an event. And we were talking about how some people don't like Teddy. And I was baffled. I was shocked. Yeah. And appalled. Mm hmm. A little insulted. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> he does get to be more prominent as the series goes on, and I Which guess that's. Which is great. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I think it's fantastic, but uh, I guess he doesn't work for some people, so. I think a lot of people also don't find it fair that Teddy gets more episodes than Mort does. Mm hmm. And I honestly think it's because Mort's not very interesting. He's kind of bland. Yeah. I don't really know what kind of stories we could do with Mort. Mm -hmm. And Mort doesn't really have that same connection to Bob or his family. Right. He's really just a customer. Whereas Teddy tries to sort of insert himself into Bob's family. Yeah, because that's his character. He puts himself in these situations because he's kind of lonely. Yeah. I feel like there's just more potential. And Bob is his best friend. Yes. (laughs) And Bob is his best friend. Whether Bob knows it or not. Or agrees. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, he... There's just more potential for his character. Yeah. There's just more potential stories for his character, I think. I'm just wondering if there are any listeners who have been watching Bob's for a while and are just... And don't like mm, Teddy? Yeah. Because I don't get you. I don't think they exist, personally. <laughs> I think everybody online that doesn't like Teddy is a robot. It's just one guy pretending to be a lot of people. They're going to robot college and majoring in I Hate Teddy 101. 
<laughs> terrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just one guy, and he was somehow betrayed by the voice actor who does Teddy, and now he's taking it out on his character. Yeah, I think that's what it is. <laughs> Bob talks Mickey into giving himself up on his terms. Everyone leaves the bank with the hostages surrounding Mickey, and they switch places with the cops. The cops are tear-gassed by their own setup, and Mickey uses the opportunity to run. He's immediately caught, of course. A dye pack explodes in Bob's back pocket, ruining his chances at getting a loan. And two weeks later, Mickey calls Bob from prison. Mickey's idea was pretty good, switching spots with the cops. Yeah, actually, that was smart. It was clever. Not just having them leave the restaurant, but actually having them go to the bank in his place. Mm -hmm. I think it would have been best if he had found the way out back to run out. Yeah. He could have been a lot smarter. Yeah. Because he makes that one move, you know, switching spots with the cops. He doesn't, of course, know that anything's going to be set off. Yeah, he doesn't know about the tear gas. No, he doesn't know about that. But he makes a good move there. And then we see him make that really stupid move of just running out the front door. I mean, the tear gas is spreading. So, of course, he thinks that everyone will be affected, but that would include him. And then we see that it doesn't go far enough Mm -hmm. to affect the cops that are nearby. I think it would have been kind of interesting if he had tried to run out the back and there were cops out there, perhaps. Is there a back door of Bob's? I'm pretty sure there is. I feel like we've seen them take out trash in the back. Oh, yeah. There's definitely a back door. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. So, perhaps Mickey just is not very good at his job because this is his first bank robbery. Yeah, that's true. That's true. He didn't really think very far ahead. No, we are showing that Mickey is an idiot, yes. which we already kind of knew. Like, you're seeing him in the hostage situation, trying to rob the bank. When he's in there, he's not making great decisions. He's playing banker. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, I like that. Oh, I it's very cute. Banker. It's it very great. cute, but it's not a great work for a bank robber, right? Yeah. it's not. He's not doing he's a great job. He's just killing time. Yeah. Because he has no idea what to do. Exactly. He has no plan. Yeah. I feel like bank robbery is actually fairly easy to get away with. Not that I'm saying people should do it, but there is... <laughs> Disclaimer, we do not condone bank robberies. No, 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 definitely not. It's just there's been a guy who has been pulling off bank robberies around our area for a long time, like months now, and they haven't caught him. They have his face really on camera. Yeah, it's like a larger guy Mm -hmm. and he's always wearing a hat and sunglasses but he seems to just walk in the bank get money somehow and then leave you know i don't think he's armed so i think that's part of it maybe the bank isn't like pressing that button or something but the guy has been getting away with it and i'm like how does that happen how is that possible i feel like the bank's policy is very straightforward when it comes to bank robberies Mm. you go in hypothetically Mm -hmm. you go in You say you have a weapon, hand them a note or something that says, put all the money in the bag or whatever. I don't know. Okay. And (laughs) they have to do it. Yeah. Because banks are insured. Right. So there's only, there's no, almost no reason to deny somebody who's robbing you. No, absolutely. Yeah. And And I think it would be easier would be easier to get away with it if. There's only one guy. Yeah, if you're not armed, there's one guy. You're not trying to hold hostages. You're not making a huge scene. No. You might even be able to get away with it without anybody in the bank actually knowing what's going on. Mm. If you're smooth enough, I guess. Yeah. If you're passing a note to one teller Mm -hmm. and then you get out of there as soon as you're done. It just surprises me that his picture has been shown... In all kinds of newspapers, and yet it's still happening. Yeah. You know, you would think that all these banks would have his picture up, and if they saw a guy who looked like him walk in, they would, I don't know, press the little button under the counter, if they have one. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested to see if if there are any listeners that work at a bank and can tell us a little bit more about their procedures Mm -hmm. as far as bank robberies go, because I'm just going off of my very limited knowledge. So hopefully no one's listening to this going, well, Vivian, geez, you're so wrong. 
about banks. <laughs> I'm just going to stew in my anger about how wrong you are and not email because you should email. Just have, saying. Have you ever witnessed a bank robbery? I have not. I have not witnessed a robbery. Oh, wait, no. No, no, that doesn't count. I witnessed someone trying to pickpocket my dad in Paris. That is not the same. No, but it was very <laughs> uncomfortable at the same time. This was when I was about 12 years old. We were on a subway train in Paris. And the train, like the subway train itself was not very occupied. And my dad was wearing a fanny pack. So the guy, of course, Jason's wearing a face. Yes, he was wearing a pa- fanny pack. Um, I'm pretty sure he still would nowadays. Anyway, um, the guy just kind of backed himself into my dad, like... And then tried to reach around and grab his fanny pack, but my dad had his hand on it. And as soon as the guy touched my dad's hand, he looked up and started panicking. And he's like, oh, wrong train! And ran out. (laughs) Wow, conspicuous. I know. He was terrible. Um, But it was really weird to watch it because I knew what he was doing. And Mm -hmm. so did my mom and my brother. So we were just trying to remain calm because we knew that my dad could deal with it, Mm -hmm. I guess. It was, it was weird though, but I've never actually seen like a robbery now. I've seen the aftermath of a bank robbery. Oh. The moment where the guy runs out of the bank. When was this? Um, I don't know. Let's say I'm old now. So (laughs) I'd say about 15 to 16 years ago. Oh my gosh. Uh, we watched... So you a... were like 30. I'm kidding. <laughs> I, was like, I was like 15 or 16. Aww. And a guy runs out of the bank. We were about half a block away and we see this guy run out of the bank. And he runs to the corner where he, where his bike was stashed. Bicycle. Oh. Not like a motorbike or anything. Mm-hmm. He hops on his bicycle. Meanwhile, he's got... I don't know, four or five cops chasing him already. This was very quick. Guy better be like a Tour de France kind of biker. About four seconds later, he gets tackled by the police. And we are literally like 20 feet away watching this all happen. And it was pretty hilarious because (laughs) this guy was so useless. He tried to rob the bank with a hypodermic needle. What? Mm -hmm. So what? He was just going to like poke someone with some maybe dirty needle maybe he said it was dirty and like had aids in it or something oh my goodness okay yeah but person got jumped got tackled got handcuffed and we were all watching and it was pretty great wow Mm -hmm. okay that's dramatic and if it was the age of cell phones which it was not i would have taken pictures and videos but alas cell phones weren't exactly the most camera worthy inventions at that point Mm, good point i think my cell phone was like 40 pounds (laughs) it could only send texts. it came with like a backpack yeah it could only send (laughs) texts it could not receive them (laughs) no the other way around Uh, it could only receive texts it couldn't send them that's stupid what the hell's the point i don't don't know that's weird yeah okay anyway anyway do you think bob stole that money no no, you think it really was Mickey that just put it? I think it, it was Mickey. Yeah. I think that Mickey probably put it in Bob's back pocket as like a thank you. Yeah, for sure. And didn't even think about the dye pack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I thought dye packs only came with like bags of money and it just looked like like a wad. It was a wad. Yeah, yeah, it was like a wad of money, but I didn't think dye packs came in those. I think. And can you use the money if it's been dye packed? Because the not. bank takes it, like, oh, I'm going to take they this away. They probably give it to the insurance company. Oh, that makes sense. But I think what happens... Bank people, message us. If not, <laughs> then that's how it should be. <laughs> I do like that the Belchers stay in contact with Mickey, because we will, spoiler alert, see him again. Yeah, we do see Mickey again, several mm-hmm. times. Yeah, yeah, actually several times, you're right. Mickey won't stay in prison forever. Maybe once... Every couple seasons. Yeah. Yeah. We do see him a few times. And I think that's sweet. Like Linda's saying that they send them books on tape. And Mm -hmm. I don't know why Louise didn't hand in that report. Louise. She probably just forgot. Yeah. Good point. She's not a good student. She's not the best student. No. No. 
Okay. It's a very honest response from her, in my opinion. She's like, like oh, oh, I just, I never handed that in. <laughs> I, and Bob doesn't reprimand her for that? Like, yeah. hey, hand in your homework. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she went to all the trouble to ask him questions. It seems like, just finish it off. But that's the good student in me talking, right? And I think (laughs) that's the, I'm interested in bad people side of Louise. Like, Mm -hmm. holy crap, there's a bank robber. I can chat with him. And I have an excuse to talk to him. Good point. This is great. For my research when I become a bank robber in the future. She would do it. She would totally do it. She would do it. I mean, it. we saw her on the electric chair a couple episodes ago. Lobster Fest. Yeah, that's probably what she did. She went and robbed a bank. Mm-hmm. Shall we get to our burgers of the week? Yeah, it feels like... Yeah, like I said at the beginning of the episode, I think this one's fantastic. And because of that, I don't really feel like I have that much to say. Well, I can list some. If you guys like hostage situations, bank robberies... Heist movies. Heist movies. Okay. I can recommend a few of my favorites. One of the best is, of course, Heat. But there's also a movie called Negotiator, which is more of a hostage situation movie Mm -hmm. with Samuel Jackson and Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey has the Negotiator, and it's fantastic. It's really Mm, good. I do like Kevin Spacey. 1997 or 98, I believe that movie was. So, early Samuel Jackson. Mm. And another great one would be Swordfish. More so for the beginning and the end, because it begins with a hostage situation, and it ends concluding that situation. Okay. It's not really a bank robbery movie, and neither is Negotiator, but it has really great interactions with hostages and negotiators. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Yeah, so just off the top of my head, those are a couple... Really great ones to watch. Mm -hmm. See, I like heist type things, but I haven't actually seen that many movies with heists or hostage situations, but I'm open to them. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm missing a really great one and I forget which one it is. Thomas Crown Affair, Inside Job, Usual Suspects. Although that one's kind of just more of like a robbery movie, I guess. Thomas Crown Affair is great. That is a very good heist movie. More of a a, a special kind, a special breed of heist movie. Okay. Because he's stealing a painting. Oh, fancy. Stealing paintings. Oh. Worth a lot it's, of money. Yeah, it's kind of a romance heisty thing. Okay. Which is fine, but... Burgers? Yeah, sure. Let's talk about burgers. Okay. You can go first. Oh, man. My burgers this week are not very good. I'm just going to preface it with that. So I'm going to win. Probably. (laughs) I might just tell you that you win because mine are not great. You haven't heard mine yet. Oh, I know. But you were telling me earlier that you think they're going to be the type of burgers where I just say, oh my God, and (laughs) I like those burgers. So, and neither of mine make me want to say that. So anyway. I thought about mine last week. While I was sleeping, like, I woke up and I typed them into my phone because I just thought about them. Yeah, that didn't happen with me. That probably means they're terrible. No, mine were so hard (laughs) to come up with. I was just searching the internet for, like, hey, what are heist movies? Can I try to make a pun out of these? Like, it was just terrible. No, it wasn't good. Okay. Um, Okay, (laughs) we'll see how it goes. My first burger... Is sort of like Teddy's phrase when he says eat and run. It's beat and run. (laughs) And it would be a beef and beet burger. That just sounds like a really aggressive police. Like, we're going to beat you and then run. Yeah, but B-E-E. Yes. T. Yes, I got that. (laughs) Um, Actually, I didn't find the recipe. Or I didn't. I actually didn't create this burger. um, Just the name. So there is a recipe to it, and it does look good. Beef and beets, if that's your thing. I had Uh, a beet burger. Is it it the same recipe? I don't know. Maybe. It's all mixed together. It's not like sliced beets. It's it's mashed up together. I will put that in the show notes if that sounds like your kind of thing. Mm. If you're listening and you're like, huh, beet and run is hilarious, Vivian. I don't know why you disparage yourself. (laughs) Anyway. Wrong. Yeah, you're wrong. I'm sorry. It's terrible. (laughs) What's your first burger? 
So a few weeks ago, more like a bunch of weeks ago, this was the Dreamatorium episode. Oh boy. And I had armed Drew Barbary. Oh uh, no, you can't bring it back. I'm not bringing it back. Okay. But this is armed Rue Berries. Armed Rue Berries? Yes. So we have berries on the burger. So a mixture of sweet and savory. Oh my god. Mm hmm. That's too close. You can't use that. <laughs> I thought it was armed too Rue good berries. to use it. I was like, too good to not use it. Terrible. <laughs> armed Rue Berries? Yep. I mean, it's cute, but it's too close to the other one. No, you didn't like the other one, so. I liked it this week. If you had come up with it this week, I probably would have liked it more. Hey, this is like the second armed robbery that Bob is part of. I yeah. didn't even think of that. Huh. Good podcaster over here. All right. <laughs> My second burger is kind of a cheat. You obviously knew that it was the second one. You mentioned it. What do you mean? You didn't mention it in the episode, but you mentioned it to me. Oh. Okay. Well, I forgot. To mention it in the podcast. Hmm. So, good podcaster. It's okay, right. we just mentioned it, and this is the podcast. That's true. <whistles> Meta. <laughs> wow. All right, my second burger is the Hamburglar. <laughs> you can't steal <laughs> that from McDonald's. I know, but I did. That is against hey, the rules. Hey, that's not one of their burger names. It is a character. Yeah. Oh, whatever. I know I technically can't use it. Disqualified. <laughs> Terrible. You probably would hate this burger anyway because it was a ham and cheese burger with grilled pineapple. And I feel like that's just not your thing. It's delicious. Oh, okay. Never mind. Like ham and pineapple. Yeah, but with cheese. Oh, I guess you like, it's like a Hawaiian, Hawaiian pizza. pizza. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And anybody who doesn't like Hawaiian pizza is sorely mistaken. For not liking something? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because it's really good. Alrighty. It I don't know, is that like a Canadian to thing to like it? Or is it just a, just a normal person thing to not like it? I don't Why know. don't people like I it? I think it's a half and half thing. I don't like it, but I also don't, don't eat meat. You don't eat ham. So You're disqualified. That. Again. Rude. <laughs> I have things to say. Sometimes. <laughs> Shush. All right, tell me your other burger. My last burger is the host sage situation. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and which has sprinklings of sage on the burger. Host sage burger? Hostage situation. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's or, terrible. if you don't like that one, I can tag team in my other replacement, oh, God. which was Host Sausage Situation. <laughs> Hot Sausage Situation? That Host just... Sausage Situation. Okay, yeah, but you Sausage... Yeah, but it it's, sounds it's like Hot say. Sausage Situation, which sounds like a really bad name for a male strip club. Hot Sausage Situation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so which of mine wins? Oh, the second one. Hot, host sage situation. Host sage situation. Yeah, unless you no. feel like giving it up to my hamburger. No, no. <laughs> we would get a copyright strike from McDonald's and they'd come knocking at our door and they'd say, you need to relinquish your rights of everything because you are in violation of everything. So McDonald's themselves will come. Yes, Hello, my restaurant. name is Big M McDonald. <laughs> Hello, my name is Big Mac. <laughs> Hello, paramedics. I think I've killed Vivian. <laughs> Please bring an ambulance. This is my buddy, Quarter Pounder. <laughs> <laughs> You're <Okay>. like Linda. <laughs> okay, alrighty then. All right, well, uh, that was a burger of the week. <laughs> All right, so that brings us to the end of Burger of the Week, a Multiverse Radio production. Thank you so much for listening to this incredibly weird podcast of ours. <laughs> if you like our show, please leave a rating and a review on iTunes. 
This is somehow the best way for people to find out about the podcast. Somehow? Somehow. I don't understand how iTunes has just, like, got the monopoly on this, but they do, so... Because they created the name podcast. (sighs) Jason, I'm complaining here. Logic has no place in this. Anyway. (laughs) Um, If you can, share our podcast with your friend. Tell them about us. You know, spread the word. Spread the word like mayo. All right. Ew. Well, you spread mayo, Jason. That's true. We would really appreciate it. If you have any comments or a punny burger name that you would like to share, because this week was hard for me. It was pretty tough. Uh, You can find us on Twitter at Multiverse Radio or Facebook at Multiverse Radio Podcast. And you can also visit our website, multiverseradio.ca. You can also visit our website, multiverseradio.ca. Because we're Canadian. Yay! (laughs) We will see you next week for our review of Season 2, Episode 3, Synchronized Swimming. swimming. Good job. We didn't even plan that. Look at us. Okay. I wasn't in on it. (laughs) And I rolled with it. So bravo to me. (laughs) All right. Thanks, guys. All right. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Bob believes he can convince the bank manager to approve his f***ing... Okay. There's a hostage situ- <laughs> oh, It's hard to do, okay? I want to say Hostage it. situation? I know, but I want to say it like a hot dog. <laughs> hot dog situation at the bank. Okay. <laughs> Which would be just a lot less dramatic. A hot dog situation? Like, what, too many hot dogs? Okay. <laughs> at the bank? What are they doing at the bank? <laughs> I don't know. Someone tried to pay with They're hot dogs? They're having a barbecue. Yeah, okay. It's a team building event, Staff Jason. appreciation day. <laughs> Yeah. There's a hostage situation at the bank, and the... <laughs> can't do it. Look. We're not going to have a bunch of bloopers. We're just going to have one long string oh, of hot awful. dogs. Hot dog bloopers. <laughs> Is that what we should call our bloopers? The hot dog? <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> I know. I'm not saying it because it makes sense. Anyway. Oh my god. Try. I don't remember what the next episode is called. Find it for me (laughs) while I talk. Uh, You can also. Nah. I'm gonna do that part over again now. Oh my god.